Hey, good evening, everybody. It's Mark Schultz, and we're here for our Thursday night, uh, late night NFTs. But uh, tonight, our discussion is uh, about blockchain in general. And um, I want you to join us tonight as we're going to be talking about uh, just uh, uh, ask me anything. So if you're part of the, uh, the blockchain or cryptocurrency world, you know that a lot of times they have AMAs, ask me anything. And tonight we're having an AMA. And I'm going to have my regular guests with us today, my team. I'm going to bring them in in a second. But in the meantime, let me just remind you that uh, I'm Mark Schultz with Digital Aircraft. And uh, we're going to be talking a little bit about our Aviator Peeps um, uh, NFT program. And we'll be talking about crypto. And we're going to be uh, sharing just some different uh, personal you know, sides and aspects of ourselves um, here tonight. And so we're really looking forward to um, having you answer, asking some questions. And, and we're going to end up doing this every Thursday night and being a little bit more informal and uh, allowing people just to continue to build our community. You know, we have a community that's 23,000 strong on LinkedIn. And then we have uh, other communities on Twitter. We have, uh, I don't know, we have five or 6,000 people following on Twitter and we have uh, YouTube and those channels are growing and we have a following on the podcast and um, we wanna continue to build community and we want to uh, be part of, you know, a group which is focused on blockchain and creating success in aviation and blockchain. And so um, I'm going to go ahead and uh, bring my guest in. My uh, my first guest we have here tonight, you've all seen before. It's uh, Gabriel. And uh, let's go ahead and just bring Gabriel into the broadcast. Hey, Gabe, how's it going? <laughs> hey, Gabe, how we doing? We got you, we got you plugged up there on mute. It looks like uh, going to need to unmute. No, that. no. Oh, there we go. Way to go. All right. Okay. Hey, you know what the most famous thing is uh, these days in video broadcasts? I guess the most commonly said phrase. Uh, hey, you're on I mute. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah, it is. Yeah. Hey, um, so uh, anyway, uh, Gabe, uh, welcome. Glad to have you with me here tonight. Uh, Gabe, for our, our new followers out there today, just tell everybody who you are and what do you do? Yeah, my name is Gabriel. Um, I'm in the Seattle area. And I work for Digital Aircraft right now, and uh, I'm doing uh, sales and marketing, and uh, I do a lot of research on blockchain and what's going on in the industry right now. And I've been uh, in the crypto and blockchain uh, uh, space since since about 2017. So, um, you know, we uh, we're here to talk about some blockchain and crypto, and yep. I'm excited. Awesome. Yeah, Gabe's my go-to guy for uh, blockchain questions, and uh, so we're gonna we're gonna be talking about that tonight. So we wanted tonight to be uh, just a, a free-form night. And um, hey, for those of you out there watching right now, um, you know there's a there's a comment box down there, and what I'd really appreciate it is if you would in the comment box uh, just tell me where you're watching from, and um, I'll uh, give you a shout out on the broadcast. We like to recognize people. We like to ask people to share the stream so that we can get the word out, and um, and we're just gonna have some fun tonight. Um, I'm going to tell you a little bit about uh, what happened down in Miami last week when I went to the Aircraft IT uh, project. Um, we're going to be talking a little bit about um, uh, cryptocurrency, a little bit about NFTs, some of the news in the NFTs. Gabe's going to share a little bit about some of his favorite cryptos and uh, what's happening in those areas. And uh, we're also going to talk about a few other personal things. Uh, Gabe said he might even give it a little give it a little peek on what some of his nutrition tips are or his uh, bodybuilding tips or things like that. So. We've got a lot of stuff we're going to do tonight. So thanks for joining. Let's just uh, let's jump right in. So, hey, Gabe, uh, uh, kind of an interesting um, week going on um, in crypto. There was kind of some ups and downs, and I know people always want to hear about some of that stuff. But what did you see going on? A couple of key things going on this week. Well, you know, if you've been paying attention to Bitcoin, you know, it hasn't been doing much. It's uh, kind of been staying around in this 19... 18, 19, 20 area for a long time now. And it's been a little bit grueling, you know, but uh, I I have been been looking at some indicators and a lot of people are saying that, you know, we're not done with uh, with, with the bottom yet. We're, we're it's still in the works and we still have a little bit of ways to go, but there's a lot of indicators too that are saying um, we could have hit the bottom at, you know, 16, 16K back in uh, a few months ago. Um, yes, so. it's really hard to tell, isn't it, though? It's just really, it's complicated, but definitely, definitely it's down. And uh, people are saying, well, should I be buying it right now or what should I do? And, and uh, you know, first of all, this is not financial advice. Gabe and I don't provide financial advice. We're not financial advisors. We like to just have educational discussions with our community friends who are interested in what we talk about. So that's the first thing I'll say. But, um, you know, yeah, Bitcoin, you know, Bitcoin has been, you know, pretty stable. I mean, we did see it go down, dip down all the way to 16, 17 few weeks ago right Gabe yeah 
uh, well, I don't, I don't think got all the way to 16, but it's, no, you know, it's been, it's been in these yeah. ranges. It's been in these ranges for the past, you know, couple months. And, uh, yeah. uh, I, I am in the, in the group of people that thinks that, that I think we did hit the bottom. Uh, I don't know. Yeah. We don't know. We could, we could go to, we could go to a 12 and 10 K. That's what some people sideways, say. you know, sideways moves on this stuff. But, uh, Gabe and I talked today, um, I traded a little bit last night with leverage on Bitcoin. And, um, you know, it was a very stable, steady up and down, up and down, up and down. And I decided I would, you know, enter in in a couple of trades and uh, I made a couple of small ones and uh, made some money off of it. Then I lost a couple. And then I said, oh, I'm going to this is so steady and so stable. I'm going to go ahead and put some leverage against one. And, uh, you know, I, I put a trade in and came out 40 percent up on it, you know, and and, uh, you know, it's a little bit risky to do that. But um, but I came out OK and then I transferred it out and put it in my bank account, you know, so. Um, that was, uh, that was, you know, you, you can get, you can, you can make money off of sideways moves, you know, on crypto. You can. Yeah. And yeah. Uh, there's a few, you know, there's a few good places to do that. And, you know, like you were saying, leverage can be uh, definitely good and bad. Risk. Yeah. It can be pretty risky and yeah. um, you do need to make sure you're super careful. So yeah, yeah, mean, exactly. Yeah. At all, so. Well, hey, Gabe, what else do we know about uh, what's going on this week? There's a couple of interesting, you know, notes on a few different currencies, like, you know, what happened with the merge and the price up and down with Ethereum and, and XRP. What's going on with XRP this week? Well, if you've been paying attention to anything, you know, if you look at the, uh, the top 100 coins right now, you know that XRP is up 50%. 50% it's up how much right past, now? Uh, it's about in the past seven days it's up about yeah, we got we got 20.6 percent right now in the last uh 24 hours 20 percent it's at uh it's at 0.4837 right now um and so that's uh that's incredible you know that's 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 a big move yeah I mean, last the, night i was listening to a really popular crypto guy well let me give a shout out to him you know crypto mason if you guys don't follow him you, you should i was watching him and uh, his girlfriend last night um Megan BZK, they, you know, they're both really into crypto and they had a live they were doing last night and it was interesting. And they were asking people, what is your opinion of a pump? What is it? You know, is it 10%? Is it 20%? Is it 30%? So they say it's a pump when a, when a crypto's going up, when it's going up fast, right? It's and definitely. they pulled everybody watching and uh, Gabe, just take a guess what you think. How much does it have to move to call it a pump? I'm going to tell you, I'm going to let you guess. I'm going to tell you what they said, you know. A pump is anything like over a How few much? percent, I, 5% maybe? Uh, yeah. OK. Well, what they did was people said anywhere between like, you know, 10, 20, 30, 40 percent. And they kind of said, you know, Crypto Mason said he said anything over 10 percent, in my opinion, is a pump. It's going. All right. So, you know, you got you got XRP doing 20 percent in the last 24 hours. I guess that falls dead in on a pump, doesn't it? Yeah, it's that's insane. Yeah, exactly. It really is. Yeah. So so, you know, I saw some news items out there and some analysis on why, you know, why it's moving. You know, why do you think it's moving right now? Well, you know the uh, unfortunately, uh, uh, Ripple and XRP are they were sued by the SEC and they've been in a long lawsuit for I don't know it's been over a year, a year, year and a few months, and they, they haven't come in, come to any resolution. Um, but yeah, they were sued for uh, selling unregistered securities, mm -hmm. um, supposedly by the SEC, and yeah. uh, that's we're we're finally seeing that there's some possible. Uh, conclusion coming coming soon hopefully yeah and uh and on friday we um hey rachel how hey. you doing <laughs> rachel got uh rachel lives in la and she got stuck in traffic and i told her hey it's okay just join when you can so rachel glad to have you i'm here good great awesome we'll come right back to you but let's quickly finish that conversation about xrp our xrp gabe because yeah, yeah. um you know xrp on friday um in the news what we saw was either friday or saturday um that uh, the sec and ripple they, they their attorneys both agreed that they were going to go in for a summary judgment and um what that means is is that both parties agreed that they put all their facts together and they give them to the judge and they say to the judge we want a summary judgment so we want basically a ruling rather than this thing going to trial and so, um, you know, that's that's what people are currently speculating on is, is that is that going to get settled and is it going to increase the value of XRP? And um, the answer is, is that already is increasing the value. But, um, you know, the, the people are usually buying on speculation when something like this is happening, when there's rumors, you know, people are buying, you know, and uh, so it's still yet to, to be determined. And Gabe, we saw something in the news about how long it might take to get a summary judgment. What was that you told me this morning? 
uh, I think actually the CEO of Ripple had Brad, a, uh, uh, Brad, Brad Garling House, yeah, and Garling House, yeah. He said it could be two months, or it could be anywhere from two months to two nine to months. months. Two to nine months, yeah, right. Yep, exactly. So, so who knows? So well, people have to keep their eyes on that, and uh, you know, and, and still maybe gives us some time to continue to keep investing in it because you know XRP, XLM, um, you know HBAR, Algo, Algorand, all those are all kind of in that same category, but but uh, they're all um, ISO. 2022 220 222 um uh coins and um i think aldo did a did a, in the past seven days up also 25 percent. so yeah it's been going up a little bit of that up. so that one's up yes, about 25 yep. percent as yep. well so if you have an algo anybody out there yeah you're up 25 exactly. percent. so very good well listen let's uh let's take a little diversion i just wanted to finish that thought before we uh uh before we um uh, lost that train of thought um, and uh, Rach, how's it going today? You're uh, you're in LA. Um, not everybody that's on the broadcast always knows you. Can you uh, introduce yourself real quick? We already did it, and tell people yes. who you are and what do you do. Yep. I am in LA right now. Just got got out of that traffic, <laughs> and I was driving back from Glendale, where the DreamWorks Animation Studio is, and I'm a super uh, animation supervisor there right now, and. So I have been helping manage the art direction for the art for our NFT project. Yeah, Rachel's on our board and uh, she has experience and we're going to we're going to break up a, in a segment tonight. We're going to talk a bit about animation and and uh, I did uh, I did send out a, a tweet and a uh, an invite today to people that were in art and in uh, in uh, animation and some different places so i'm hoping we have a few people watching tonight that are interested in the art background so so you know let's just say one more thing about crypto gabe and let's jump to another subject because i told people we'd uh, we'd be following different subjects tonight hey i see we got a bunch of people following out or watching out there tonight um and i said i said at the beginning that if you're watching uh just give us a comment down there in the comment box and tell us where you're watching from i'd love to know where you're watching from and we're answering questions tonight so um you can submit questions and we're going to answer them live so I uh, just gave one more thing about crypto I wanted to say is that we saw the Ethereum merge happen last week. And uh, and it, and it um, for those that maybe aren't following, I don't know what that is. You know, Ethereum um, has been a proof of work uh, process, um, verification, authentication for, you know, since the beginning. And over the last couple of years, they've been working on proof of stake. And basically what it does, just so you know, not everybody knows this. And I'm just going to say it real quick is proof of stake dramatically changes the way in which um, transactions are authenticated. And it um, it's uh, a much uh, uh, greener process. Um, it requires much much less energy, and so people are really excited about it. And it appears as though it went off without a hitch. But um, as expected, there was a lot of hype, and the price went up um, prior to the merge because people were thinking it was going to go up. And then after the merge, it went off without any problems, and so it's really dumped down. Um, it was down as low as I think 1,200 and something yesterday, and I think today it was hovering around 13, 14, wasn't it, Gabe? Something like that. Somewhere around 13. Yeah, something like that. So anyway, you know, those are those are crypto things. Um, so let's move on to some other topics. We can come back to crypto um, later. So I promised you guys all that we, you know, be on these Thursday nights just talking about things that help build our community. And and um, hey, I'm always a big proponent of having a balanced life. And that's why we try to do this on Thursday night. That's a little bit more fun. And so, um, you know, I told everybody we would just talk about some other fun things tonight. Gabe, Tell us, tell, let people know about what some of your other interests are, are outside of work. I know that you have some that you you do every day. So give just give people a little bit of, about you, Gabe. Well, uh, one thing I really do like doing is uh, I'm, I'm very active, and I've been I've been working uh, uh, working out for a long time, and that was that was actually something I I was uh, studying in college was uh, nutrition and exercise science. So um, something one of my passions and something I like doing on the side and. Uh, I'd like to help people with that. So uh, if anybody has any nutrition questions, <laughs> exercise science questions, you know, you can Gabe's, help a, Gabe's a real physical guy. And uh, boy, that was really rough, Gabe, because I finally got to the place where I was going to the gym real consistent, you know, really consistent before the pandemic. And uh, then they shut all the gyms down and I, I just lost it. And I, I, I haven't been, I haven't been like you. I haven't gotten back, you know, back into shape again. But, you know, what's we your all did. We all did. I know. What's your position on that? What did you do, you know? Well, uh, you know, it, the big thing is uh, is getting is getting out there and exercising. That's 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 just the biggest part of it. I mean, we we sit down, we're here for eight hours, we're 
we're working at home. We're, we're not getting out there moving. Uh, we're not expending any calories. So it's, uh, it's a big thing. Just, just not even, not even going out and, uh, exercising for long periods of time. It's just, it could be walking. It could be walking for 15 minutes every, every couple hours. It's just, we need to get more active. That's, that's what we need to be doing. So, um, and, and you go yeah. to the gym and you, you do weights, right? I do. Yeah. So uh, that was one I was, I was in that group of people that put on the, what, what were we call like the COVID, COVID 20, COVID 15, COVID 19. <laughs> yeah. Something right, like yeah. that. So yeah, um, right. yeah. you gotta get back in the gym and get consistent. You don't have to go to the gym, uh, getting outside and walking and jogging or whatever you like doing. It doesn't have to be, you know, something that you don't like, such as, you know, running, you know, you can just get outside and, and, uh, uh, you know, go play, uh, any sort of sport with your friends or I know you were really dead getting active. Yeah, I know you were really deadlifting and benching a lot before and I know that's way down, but what do you what are you benching or deadlifting these days? So. I I don't know. I, I can still, you know, rep out two twenty five on the bench for, you know, okay. ten pounds. Yeah, right. Uh, yeah. Uh, there was a guy in Miami that I saw, you know, a couple days ago, big guy, you know, really strong. And uh, I think I told you he was doing 158 kilos, didn't I? I think I kilograms. No, he was, I think he said he was doing uh, uh, four four plates on each side, which yeah, is, uh, is that? Four, is that four or five, somewhere around four or five for uh, yeah. on a bench, which is wow, insane. That's, I know that's crazy. That's insane. Really crazy. Yeah. <laughs> I, hey, Ray, um, uh, I, I know you work out as well. Uh, what do you do to keep yourself exercise? All the things, surfing, gym. Things that you like. Yes. I, get out there and jogging, you know, we just need to get active. Yeah, I just like moving. Let's start with moving. Because, I mean, during the <laughs> pandemic, I was realizing that like my legs were I don't know. They were like super tense. I was like, what's wrong with my body? But it was because I wasn't working out. So it sounds yeah. like, like more work to work out, but in the end, your body's going to love you and appreciate you for it. But yeah, you know, I, you know, people don't necessarily think of surfing as like an exercise, but you told me that you went out and did some training and stuff. And what's the most invigorating, invigorating part of, uh, you know, surfing. I mean, what, what, what gives you the most exercise? There's a lot of paddling involved, which isn't my favorite part. I just want to catch a wave, but <laughs> that's, you are only rewarded to catch a wave if you go paddle out there. And, um, so it takes a lot of, a lot of energy to get out there and like know when to swim out there and make sure you're not like expending your energy too much, like against the waves and also yoga helps with like the pop-up on the board like with balance and just like um yoga is a good way to to help in surfing um from flexibility or just strength or what yeah because the pop-up when you pop up on your board it's no. like really fast and you kind of have to be a little bit balance. flexible to do yeah balance and flexibility balance flexibility but you, but you do strength training at the gym too, though, don't you? I do. I do Orange Theory, so I don't. I just follow the trainers. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Right. Well, good. Well. But yeah. also, Gabriel taught me how to snowboard, which I always skied growing up. But I wanted to transition to snowboarding, and I'm not going back. <laughs> but I think That's surfing awesome. and okay. skiing helped me like learn how to snowboard yeah. faster. Yeah. Well, I, I know the two of you, you are really into nutrition too. So let's give people a couple of different nu nutrition tips. Gabe, what's your, what's your nutrition tip for the week? Tip of the week. Yeah. Tip of the week. Oh man. Um, well, we got to lay off the, uh, the excess. Uh, we got to lay off the snacking. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. That's just one, one thing. You well, know, one your, thing I realized. Healthy, well, what's your healthy food? Your healthy snack? Your healthy go-to? You know, healthy go-to. Well, something that I just figured uh, that I just learned about that my sister actually sent me uh, for my birthday uh, a couple weeks ago was uh, uh, mushroom beef jerky, and it was just it's this new beef, beef jerky, jerky. Yeah, but but it's uh, made out of uh, shiitake mushrooms. So, it tastes um, like meat. It's really good. Yeah. Yeah. 
Yeah. No soy, no toxins. Super clean. And, and what's it called? What's what's the brand? If people want to buy it. And I forgot. Mushroom jerky. But oh, if okay. you look up mushroom jerky. Okay. All right. Yeah. Nice. <laughs> Okay. Yeah, hands, mushroom jerky. Check hands, out, mushroom guys. jerky. All right. Okay. All right. Rach, what's stuff. your uh, what's your good food nutrition tip for the week? Well, I, I probably people don't know watching this is that I do have my own um, health and wellness business, and through Arbon International, so I I teach others how to approach eating healthy and how they can. Um, learn more about foods that strengthen their body and keep them full and just I, I help teach about nutrition um, to my clients so I would say stay away from canola oil but I feel like people oh, right, okay. people really <laughs> half of the people out there know that but oh, most people don't I don't I would yeah. I would just say never eat canola oil because it really bloats you and it's it is like not it has a lot of toxins in it you could use olive oil or coconut oil instead or olive what's, your, oil. what's your favorite snack food to go to i love um brown rice cakes with uh almond butter on top yeah. with cinnamon and honey it's good Nice. Okay. I've yeah. also seen you put apples on them sometimes too, right? Yeah. Yeah. Really nice. Or, or nice. blackberries or blueberries. Some kind of fruit on there. All right. Okay. Yeah. All right. Well, cool. Well, you know, exercise, nutrition, all part of a good balanced life, you know, so crypto, exercise, nutrition, you know, all, all really all good things balance, you know, we like doing different things and there are things that we're interested in and things we like to do, you know, there's no question about that. Yeah. Well, cool. Well, listen, um, uh, I, I wanted to uh, maybe um, have another conversation here is that I told some people we talk a little bit about uh, about animation and animators. And so, you know, let's let's shift over to that discussion. Rach, how did you get involved in animation? What was your what's your background? How did you get to where you are? I. How, why did I want to be an animator? Well, I always loved drawing and theater and film, so I thought that that animation was a good mix. So I ended up going to Savannah College of Art and Design and I studied animation there. And when I graduated, I worked more on my portfolio and I didn't get a job in animation until two years after I graduated. So I had to work on myself and my art before getting that job. And then my first job was in Vancouver, Canada. I worked at um, Bardell Entertainment on a DreamWorks show. And from there, I went to- hey, Wait, tell people what else they were famous for. There was a couple other things they were famous for. Rick and Barbara. Morty. Rick and Morty, okay. Yes, right. they are the creators of Rick and Morty. So I would say yeah. they're most famous for Rick and Morty. And um, yeah. and you also worked on a Nickelodeon show while you were there, right? Yes, 44 yeah. Cats. 44 Cats, and it was first released in Italy, which was really interesting. And it came out as, uh, wasn't it 44 Gatos or something like that? Yes. <laughs> yes, I animated many cats, many tails, many ears, many whiskers, all of the above. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and then I skipped over from Vancouver, Canada to San Diego, California, where I worked at PlayStation, Sony PlayStation, um, Sony Interactive. Um, I worked on The Last of Us Part Two as a cinematic animator. And tell people that might not know, what's a cinematic animator? I animated the, I helped animate the cut scenes in the game. So I was animating the animation that tells the story throughout the game. So I didn't animate any gameplay animation, that I animated the storytelling. Yes, and okay. I met a lot of amazing people there and it was a really great team and I miss them all. And um, yeah, it was it was a great team. And then from there I left to Counterpunch, which is a small studio in Venice, California. And I worked on the Halo game, the most recent Halo Infinite game. And I was another cinematic animator there. 
And then I went from there to DreamWorks Animation. And you were doing face animation um, there is what you were doing, right? Yeah, cinematic animation, face animation for the cinematic. Okay, all right. So you were basically animating faces to voice. Is that what it was or what? Um, just, I was just animating all the facial expressions for the acting. So okay. everything yeah. on your face. <laughs> yeah, nice. Okay. And you know, I, I want to, I want to throw a couple of those things in there because you know, you left out a few other things that you were doing just because maybe they didn't seem significant, but people that are watching might think, oh, she went right from this place to a big studio to here to there. But the reality is, is that you focused on doing graphic arts and doing some graphic arts projects. And you actually did some things for Facebook and then you went to Bardell and then you, you know, worked at a couple of small studios and, you know, and so the thing was, is that you were building this portfolio of credentials basically which were positioning you you know to go to dreamworks and what was what was dreamworks looking for when you got the job at dreamworks they were looking for an animator but also someone who is able to uh help lead a team because my animation team is very small at dreamworks tv where we we lead a lot of different teams throughout the world so they're looking for they weren't just looking for an animator they're looking for someone who could guide a team yeah and, and when you were at when you were at bardell um they were a partner studio for dreamworks right so they were a studio that did work for dreamworks right yeah so, they, so they were also now, yeah yeah i work with two partner studios right now hmm. and we manage them and um great working with them it's been uh i'm a great experience i'm really glad i was able to work in a studio in an overseas studio just so i can know how, how it works and i can have more understanding on how to approach things on our team at dreamworks yeah. in glendale so um it's yeah they were looking for management skills along with animation. Now, Rach, uh, due to the time zone right now, people watch this broadcast all over the world, but right now there's people in the Asia Pacific region, which a lot of times watch my broadcasts. And so there could be somebody in Taiwan or India that's watching this, you know, that you work with. But you also, when you were in school, you studied a little bit in a foreign country. Can you tell us about that a little bit? In Hong Kong, I, there was a SCAD, uh, uh, SCAD campus there and I was like I'm gonna go there I've always wanted to to visit more of Asia so I went there for a semester four months and it was I really loved their bakeries <laughs> <laughs> they have really good bakeries they have really good food yeah. um but you like the dim sum is what you liked right I like the dim sum but I didn't you don't at least I didn't think of, oh, I'm going to go honk to Hong Kong and like go to a ton of amazing bakeries. Ah, but yeah. I went every corner in Hong Kong. There's amazing bakeries everywhere. But yeah. um, I studied there and I had a lot of great teachers that could help me learn what I needed to learn within animation and how to become a better animator. And it was just great to get, you know, different perspective from different different people who are also inspired and want to do the same thing as me. Yeah, it really increased your international awareness as well when you were doing that, you know? Yeah, yeah. 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 It was fun. Cool. Very cool. Very good. Well, that's that's great. So listen, I, I wanted to do that tonight because, you know, the, the animation, the artistic component of some of the things that we do, you know, plays right into um, our business and we've leveraged that and, you know, and to, and to engage with somebody that has you know, that kind of background, um, people might just on the surface think, well, you know, how does this team really fit together? And it's because, you know, the creative part of it, the, uh, you know, the, the background, the animation part of it um, was a critical part of this uh, NFT project that we that we had done. But yeah. So hey, let me let me talk. Let me talk about that a little bit. I'll kind of shift over to some of these conversations with Gabe. But um, uh, I want to talk about a couple of news items that came out this week with respect to NFTs that I thought were really super interesting. Um, Gabe, you remember when we had uh, Travel X on the broadcast? Maybe you tell yes, people real quickly what they do and then I'll I'll talk about the news item real quick. 
Yeah, I think so. Travel X was, uh, they were working on a lot of things, but the thing that we specifically uh, had them on the show for was their NF ticket, where they were turning an NFT into a, uh, uh, an airplane ticket. And so their, their goal was to um, make a marketplace for uh, a buying and selling uh, airplane tickets as tickets. NFTs. Yeah, e-tickets so. using NFTs. And so, um, you know, people initially think, well, what are NFTs used for in aviation? And that's that's one very specific use case is uh, airline tickets. And um, the cool thing in the news this week is they went live. Um, and, uh, you know, so so TravelX is live now and they're actually, you know, buying, selling and exchanging tickets. And I've been seeing news items all week long about new airlines which are joining. So I know they're actively marketing and they're actively bringing on new airlines onto this travel, onto this platform, this marketplace platform. And, um, you know, so I wanted to highly encourage you guys out there watching to go check it out. Go check out travelx.io or travelx.com. And uh, uh, they got a really interesting program out there right now. And if you're an airline, I know I have a lot of airline friends who follow this broadcast. Um, you know, uh, if you're in commercial or in revenue, um, you guys should go take a look at that because it really uh, it's a pretty amazing um, application. Hey, who of us out there hasn't had a problem where you bought an airline ticket, you canceled, you changed it? You know, um, I wanted to give airline tickets to my family members. You know, I've lost them. I, you know, I can't find the e-ticket. There's all kinds of reasons why we have challenges around tickets and e-tickets. Now it's gotten a little bit better. Let me give some credit to the airlines. They've given wallets and they've made it a little bit easier now since the pandemic you know, to find tickets that you might have canceled in the past, but uh, um, it's still really a challenge. And to do something like attach NFTs to them is really, really pretty cool thing. So the reason I bring that up is, is that NFTs um, are one very creative way that uh, in a use case in aviation where people are using um, blockchain and NFTs to be able to solve particular business problems. That's, um, that's one, you know, of what people are doing. Yeah, absolutely. And um, let me uh, uh, let me let me talk a little bit about um, from there. Talk a little bit about the uh, the conference that I was at last week. So I went down to um, I went down to Miami, and we uh, we had did a number of things. We went to the Aircraft IT conference in Miami, and uh, there was uh, I don't know fifty or sixty vendors there, and um, uh, a couple thousand I think people down there. And uh, there were stage presentations and vendors in the exhibit hall. And basically people are gathering, looking for ideas and knowledge and information about the industry to be able to implement digital in the industry. So you guys know I'm passionate about that. And, um, and so that's a place that we go in order to be able to um, engage with others on the topic of digital. And I also had a stage presentation where I did, um, I talked about use cases for blockchain and aviation. And those of you watching, you know that we had a really good um, run this summer talking about blockchain and aviation. We're continuing that. And I actually have uh, two more conferences I'm going to and one, two, three more webinars that I'm doing, you know, on blockchain and aviation. So we're continuing to further the conversation. Now, you might think, stop, stop. Haven't we heard enough, you know, blockchain and aviation? My answer is I don't think so. All right. Um, so, guys, this morning I met with um, uh somebody a company that i met down at the aircraft it all right and i told them about our nft project and what we're doing and honestly um you know respectfully the gentleman didn't didn't really know anything about nfts okay now that reminded me of myself just three four years ago where i didn't know anything about nfts and so you know one of our goals is to help educate people on this so that that can be technology that's being considered for use in aviation so Rachel, how long ago did you learn about NFTs? Maybe like two years ago. Two years ago. And we really didn't really completely understand them really until this year. You know, uh, probably I would say, don't you think? Well, no, yeah. maybe, I maybe heard two years the ago. I heard name but... two years ago on Clubhouse. And I was like, what is that? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I heard right. someone say we're launching our first NFT, and I was like, "Was like, am I missing something here? What is an NFT? What is that? <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So it certainly hasn't been, you know, mainstream. And even now today, I would say that it's not mainstream. And so we believe that there's a tremendous opportunity to leverage blockchain. Um, in the industry, I'm going to soon be doing some uh, webinar and live broadcast with a company that we had on our show, um, and it's uh, Earhart Solutions. We're going to be doing some some uh, live broadcasts and some private webinars and things to be able to help people understand how NFTs can be used for records, for example. 
And, um, and that's just yet another use case uh, for blockchain. And so we believe it's important for people to look at those things so that we can understand how to um, better uh, create better efficiency. Now, next Wednesday, um, I have another company which I just recently met. They're called Trace Search. You may want to keep an eye on this. Um, I'm doing a live broadcast next Wednesday, and we're going to talk about their records program. They're a company who manufactures and distributes parts, you know, to major OEMs. And they said, man, the paperwork process is messed up. And so a couple of years ago, what they did was that they created a blockchain application for, for creating of records. And they created an interesting hybrid solution, which is they store the records on the cloud in AWS, and then they publish the hash to the blockchain. So they publish, publish the record to the blockchain. So if you're interested in NFTs and records, you're gonna wanna um, you're going to want to watch that one as well. So I have a couple of broadcasts coming up where we're going to be talking about NFTs and records. So why do I tell you about all that stuff? Because people all around us are implementing blockchain and aviation. They're doing different things, all right? And so we decided we would do the same thing, you know? Um, hey, Gabe, tell everybody a little bit about uh, our blockchain project and how we married our product and services together with a, an NFT, um, uh, an NFT, yeah, yeah. Yeah, so what, what we're trying to do is uh, we wanted to launch a, uh, an NFT, a utility NFT, uh, where we were able to use our products and services and attach it to these NFTs. Um, so uh, we, we have uh, our, our, the first one that we launched was uh, uh, Stages. It was called Aviator Peep Stages, right? And uh, that one gives you access to um, the, the broadcast and to put you on the stage and get your, uh, get, get your ideas out there. Um, and the other, the next one we had was uh, Aviator Peeps Admission, and that one gives you access to um, a portal that we have um, with uh, uh, training, crypto training, and and uh, a video library, and access to a bunch of other stuff. Um, and then we have a third one called uh, Aviator uh, Peeps uh, uh, Connect. 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 I'm sorry, yep. Aviator Peeps yep. Connect. And that one's that one's just a collectible that we put out there for people that wanted to just buy those ones. So. Um, but the main two that we're uh, that we have that have utility on them um, are stages and uh, admission. Yeah, and uh, you know definitely people should check them out. Um, let's talk a little bit more about it. But um, up in the corner over there um, is uh, one of the aviator peeps. He's up there watching us as we're doing this. Um, Rach, maybe tell everybody a little bit about the uh, the art project that you got involved in to help us, you know, to uncover our vision for marrying NFTs and art and aviation together. We went on to 99 designs. We put a contest up for who can create the best design for our prompt. And we received a giant response of amazing artists creating different art in their style and their perspective uh, for our prompt. And it was really hard to find which artists we really wanted to work with because there are so many great designs that were submitted. But we ended up with the Aviator Peeps design and it was, um, yeah, it's been really great experience working with the artist who, who created this design and he's just done such a great job in displaying um, aviation type people or people who work within the avian aviation industry or are just interested in aviation and he did a really good job putting personality to each one and making each one unique and so it was really fun process and yeah this was one of my picks here i like this one because <laughs> of the because of the vintage nature of the guy and uh, you know he's holding his control stick and you know i just thought that was really cool that was just one of them that i really liked yeah, yeah. There are so many good ones. I mean, I, I love all the do designs. We did a, he did a good job. We did a good job um, working with him. And then you went ahead and we we found someone to do tiny some little cycles of our aviator peeps like that one, the animation cycle up there on the top. And now we have some living, breathing aviator peeps. <laughs> like that yeah, dude up there. Exactly. And uh, Gabe, I guess you got the uh, the, the collectible ones up uh, in the last uh, seven days, right? So they're out there now, right? Oh, we can't hear you, Gabe. So they are out there. You have the NFT uh, Connect uh, 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 
uh, they, I believe, are at point. Yeah, we could put a slide up and, and show that to people real quick. I see we have a slide sitting in there. Yeah, why don't you tell people where they can go to get them? Yeah, on OpenSea, uh, OpenSea.io. Uh, and uh, these are uh, the cheapest ones out there. So I think I, I was trying to remember. I can't remember what they were. They're they're for they're point zero two point zero two ETH, right? So yeah, and um, uh, since Ethereum is running at about thirteen hundred today, that means that today they'd be like twenty six dollars. But when Ethereum goes up to, you know, ten thousand dollars, they'll be a lot more. So you can't ever claim that something is going to increase in value. But uh, this particular collectible, I happen to think it's going to be a collectible because we have a famous artist here who's managing the project, you know, on our team. And, uh, and bringing together good, you know, solid artwork. And uh, we're, we're working really hard to have it be something that's relevant to the community. We believe that they represent us as people in aviation. And so that's really cool. And so we're creating a lot of interest. Hey, um, Gabe, do you remember what I told you last week? I had a guy who, uh, I had a guy who came to the aircraft IT and it was really cool. He said, uh, I came to the IT, aircraft IT conference just to see your, you know, your presentation. And uh, we, he, he quickly went to open seas and he looked up, um, you know, one of them and he was flipping through and he immediately said he had a favorite. Do you remember what I told you? I think he said he liked the angry eyes. He did like the guy with the red shirt there in, in the middle <laughs> holding the iPad and the angry eyes. Yeah, right. Yeah. And I and I said, well, well, Susan was there with me and she said, well, why do you like those? And he says, because sometimes I get angry, you know, so I I wanted one which was aggressive or you know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah right we all yeah. get angry i mean people have all the types of emotions or we would not be human yeah and uh rach you wanted to give a little bit of uh, uh of female uh character to some of them so what did you do to some of them here i told him that we can't, we need female characters and so um i told him to give the girls you know this is this is just an exaggerated um, staple in creating a cartoon character. But I was like, just give her, give them eyelashes with some cute little blush, and and that'll convey that we have we have a female. And he did a good job with the design. He really did. He did. Really and uh, you see yourself doing that kind of thing when you're when you're doing you know animated characters and things, right? And, and being in the industry. Um, Addy doing. You know, giving features. You said exa exaggerated features, right? Yes. I, I mean, all of these features are pretty exaggerated. All of the... Yeah. He did a good job with the expressions. They're very appealing and engaging and fun. Yeah. Yeah, we just we just really liked it. We really did. So, Gabe, tell people the process that they go through to... If they want to get one of these, what do they have to do? Just at a high level, just tell people what you have to do. Well, there's a few things that you gotta do. And if you are not a crypto savvy type of person, it's a little bit difficult, but um, you you do need a some sort of wallet for your cryptocurrency. Um, I think that OpenSea is compatible with a few. Uh, the, the biggest one that most people use is MetaMask. Um, I think- I also see they gave the Trust Wallet is there and they use Connect Wallet, which Connect Wallet trust can wallet. actually connect to you know, 20 or 30 different wallets. So actually, I think it's grown quite a bit. Okay, yeah, yeah. I, I, I personally don't have one, but I agree. I, I think that MetaMask could get taken over one of these days. But um, either way, you just need a, a, a cryptocurrency wallet that's compatible with uh, OpenSea. And what you need to do next is you have to actually fund that wallet. So with uh, either Ethereum or uh, Polygon, I think that these ones yeah there's five or six coins that they'll take they'll take uh ethereum uh, matic. uh polygon ethereum. matic they'll take die um, rev a few others yeah um, and yeah. since these are polygon nfts um it all has to be on the the polygon network um so if that's another thing that you need to understand is that there are two different networks there's uh or well there's a lot of different networks but the we created these nfts on the polygon network um, because it's a whole lot cheaper um, and it will be a lot cheaper for even even after this Ethereum merge, it didn't really do anything about the gas fees. So once Ethereum yeah. starts um, getting crazy, which I, that's what I think, <laughs> um, there's still going to be crazy gas fees. Um, so but if these since these are going to be Polygon NFTs, there there will not be 
gas fees that are yeah i've transferred them for like a hundredth of a penny actually right. you know yeah. so so yeah so once you've gotten the the wallet funded um a, uh, through through a, an exchange so you would have to sign up for an exchange or if you already had an exchange such as uh coinbase oh, you can buy directly in the wallet too you can buy directly in the wallet um yeah. i think there's just some limits on on those because they use some uh third party I can't remember which ones they use, but you can directly buy from like Metamask or Trust Wallet. Um, Crypto.com, a few, a few Coinbase different wallet, uh, you know, yeah. Yeah, but but if you wanted to get, I think like something like Dai, you would have to you would have to have an exchange. You would have to have be signed up with an exchange, buy the Dai or you know the whatever coin from that exchange, and then move it to the wallet. So the process is. You need a wallet. You need to um, uh, be signed up for a cryptocurrency exchange. You don't have to, but there, it's it's better if you are. And then you can move the funds from the cryptocurrency exchange to the wallet, and then you have a funded wallet, and you're able to connect it to Metamask. And then and then they connect it to OpenSea to the OpenSea.io uh, marketplace, and then you can buy easily buy one of the uh, the nfts yeah so it seems a little complicated but if you are into crypto you, you're going to be you're going to be getting all all over this so yeah uh, you know people you know one of, one of the, the reasons the that we're doing this is that people like you need to understand that we're trying to help people to better understand you know the the blockchain world and the crypto world and so it might seem like oh wow this is uh you know complicated if you're not into crypto or blockchain you might think this is a lot of work but that's one of the things that we're trying to do we're trying to help educate people you know, because this is coming and uh, this is a really good, easy way to do this. And one of our episodes that we did in the blockchain and aviation, we did one on actually doing this. We're going to actually create one here in the next week, which is uh, very specifically targeted to helping people to do this, a video, and we're going to put it up. But I think it was episode five or I can't remember. I should have looked before the broadcast, but one of our episodes, you know, Gabriel walked through this and he showed people how to do this. So you can go back and take a look at our, our broadcast and you can actually see, you know, how to do it. But um, also, uh, you know, Gabriel's on uh, on LinkedIn and um, anybody out there that wants to, that needs some help, you can always reach out to Gabe um, on his LinkedIn or on my LinkedIn and ask for some help. And we'll absolutely help you, of course, you know, to do this because listen, um, really my, one of my life's passions is, is to help people. It really is. That's really what I do. I like to help people and specifically in aviation and in digital, I like to help people to be successful in the implementation you know, of digital, including blockchain and different things like this. So really, I'm serious. I, I would really like to see you guys reach out to me and uh, uh, let us help you, you know, to do this. Hey, I want to give you a quick glimpse on a couple of things. Um, I have a couple of other slides I want to show you that um, just talk a little bit about our NFT project itself. We had this Aviator Peep Stages um, project and, uh, and this project itself, um, the reason that we did it is because the NFT project itself was paired with our services. Digital Aircraft is a company that does digital project implementation um, and consulting, number one. Number two, we do contract sales and marketing. And number three, we do mergers and acquisitions. And so what we did is we said, how could we use a blockchain project to be able to help people to learn and to be able to leverage that blockchain project to be able to pair it with our products and services. And so we came up with this project, um, you know, which was Aviator Peeps. And the first NFT we created was called Stages. And now what it really is, it's designed to be like access. So you might say, well, how does the NFT relate to your products and services, all right? Under traditional circumstances, you would come to me and say, hey, I wanna be on your stage, all right? And we would sign some kind of agreement and you would be on our stage and I would help you to promote your company and your products and services. And we might sign a contract and you know it might be for one time on the stage or it might be a series of things or it might be longer term where we're doing webinars and things like that but what we did is we said let's create an nft and give people access to it so if you buy one of these um, uh, aviator peeps stages nfts you get access to our stage now here's something really cool about it that i want you to know is is that the nft retains value all right so it's like a bank account you buy it you use it, it's like a membership to getting on our stage, and then either you continue to use it or you sell it to somebody else, and then you can actually um, you know, get your money back, less a service fee, or you actually can make money if the price has gone up. Now, I can't guarantee any of that. I can't guarantee anyone's gonna ever make any money from buying our NFTs, that, that would be misrepresentation. But 
you know, if you look at it, if you buy one today, and if we know that cryptocurrency is going to go up, the possibility of that NFT going up in value um, is reasonably high. But the main thing is, is, is that you have you have access to our product and services through an NFT. That's the first thing. The second one is, is we have another slide, which uh, after this, which shows that we have a, a, a portal. And inside that portal, we have access to actually all of our videos that we've done. And then on the next slide, um, it actually talks about um, how we do webinars and we do videos and we do promotions and press releases and all kinds of things like that, that are all part of this stages, um, you know, product. Uh, and so if you acquire one of our NFTs, you get this. And then the next one we have is this, this, uh, uh, I guess I took the slide out, but basically we have the collectibles. So really tonight wasn't about, um, you know, promoting our project, but I, I wanted, I always want to tell you how we're combining um, uh, blockchain in with uh, aviation. And the main thing is, is that digital aircraft is here to help people and help people be successful in aviation and in digital. And again, so what we do is we do project uh, management and implementation. We do digital consulting. I actually sit on the board of, a, of an MRO out in the Pacific region. And um, I work with a lot of companies and do contract sales and marketing. And we have experts that write blogs and we do these stage presentations and we do press releases and a lot of different things like that. And we decided that having this NFT project was gonna help us to be able to leverage the momentum of the industry and uh, what's happening around blockchain um, to promote our services. So that's really, you know, what we did. So listen, if you want to reach out to us at Digital Aircraft, um, we have a page that says all the different links that you can go to. We could throw that up. And, um, you know, we're on uh, our website, we're on LinkedIn, we're on Twitter, we're on YouTube. If you want to watch replays of the, uh, the series that we do, uh, most of them are on YouTube. We have a Discord. Gabe, tell them quickly what a Discord is and why they should go to it. Discord is the easiest place to get your questions answered. And it's, it's you know, we're trying to build a community on the Discord because um, once again, you can hop in a video channel in a uh, uh, in a, a text channel and you can just start talking or you can hop in a video call. And uh, it's just it's way easier than any other. I, I think it's way easier than any other platform yeah. you want to get out. So, and then you can go to OpenSea and actually buy the NFTs. And then uh, we have a few other fun things that we do, like Facebook, Instagram, TikTok. We have a few videos on there. We're growing in some of that areas. Um, actually, if you're a Twitch user, this broadcast is going out on the Twitch tonight at the same time. And, you know, we have people that are in the NFT world that are on Twitch. And uh, we do a few things here and there on Clubhouse. Hey, the big thing is, is that we are trying to create a community and we're trying to create a community of people that are together learning about digital and digital and aviation and implementation. And I really appreciate you, you know, being part of this community. We are here to help foster and build and grow that community here at Digital Aircraft. And uh, as a team, we want to help. We want to just reach out and be part of it. We want you to have balance in your life. That's why we talk about things like exercise and talk about uh, nutrition and and NFTs and crypto and finance and just whatever we can on these nights. Um, hey, keep an eye out for our live broadcasts that we have. The next one that I have is next Wednesday. Um, I have a couple of webinars that I'm doing. I'm gonna post those as well. Looking forward to seeing you on those. You can reach out to me at that email address that was on the screen, mark at digitalaircraft.org. And we look forward to seeing you at being part of our community. Yes. Yes, Rachel, any parting thoughts? People should try surfing out. Okay. Yeah. Excellent. Don't be afraid. I've yeah. never seen a shark in my life. Knock on wood. <laughs> I'm really glad <laughs> in you the wild. That. That's good advice. I, That's good I, advice. Get to, I get to see dolphins when I go. Surfing. You told me not too long ago that you were surfing and there were dolphins swimming around you, right? Yeah. That is it's insane. Like, it's like Moana. But she doesn't meet dolphins, but you know what I mean. Moana. No, that's insane. It's like it's like paradise on a board, right? Yeah. Yeah. Cool. <laughs> if, if when you're not getting crushed by the waves. By the waves. <laughs> Gabe, snowboarding season is coming up. You forgot to tell people that's your thing, right? It's one of my favorite things. If you guys are in uh, Washington, <laughs> let's go. <laughs> Look up Gabe. You can go snowboarding. Awesome. Perfect. All right. Chris Mount with Snow Ball Stevens Pass. Right. Awesome. All right, everybody. Hey, thanks for joining us tonight. Um, I hope that we just had a little fun here tonight and uh, join us on Thursday nights. We're going to try to continue to have fun doing this and building community. And, and the other times during the daytime, we're going to continue to do broadcasts where we're going to bring you strategies and tactics about digital and aviation. And so keep an eye out and watch for that. Hey, thanks for watching tonight. Thanks, Gabe. Thanks, Rachel, for being here. I appreciate it. Of course. Yep.
All right, everybody, fair winds and following seas. Thanks for joining us tonight, and we'll see you again on our next broadcast. Bye for now.